Thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me to this absolutely amazing. I haven't seen so much crowd uh, ever since I visited a dharna in JNU. I think it's just... Uh, <laughs> and uh, by the way, I'm from JNU, so it's actually very good that the questions would be at the end because nowadays anybody who raises a hand, I think he or she is asking for azadi. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, to come back to this topic, uh, I am, I am a free, free speech absolutist. So I believe that dissent, uh, good or bad, should be allowed. So there is, uh, uh, there is room for good dissent and there is uh, room for bad dissent. And um, I would say ridicule all other isms except criticism. But the problem that we are seeing uh, ever since uh, 2014 is, it's almost like a Cambrian explosion, as we call it in science, as if that uh, anything bad that has ever happened in this country, anyone who's been ever ruined, the economy, the institutions, the people, the corruption, has happened since 2014. Before 2014, everything was absolute. It was like a Garden of Eden, people strolling out and, uh, uh, you know, onto a beach, and just everything was absolutely nice. There were no riots, there was no lynching, India was in Lynchistan, there was no emergency, uh, the judges were absolutely perfect, uh, the institutions, RBI was working, the best central bank in the world, uh, our cricket was in great shape, um, and our journalists were just brilliant journalists, you know. Um, and everything went wrong uh, on 16th of May 2014 when uh, Mr. Modi was elected. Now, the point is you can have that view. Uh, in, my, in my book, of course, you can have that view. I mean, don't people still believe in stupid, loony views? Don't, don't people still believe in communism? So the, the point of the matter is when you have seen over the last 80 years all nations that were communists, being destroyed by this ideology and you still have millions of Indians still believe in communism and worship Mao and worship Lenin, uh, what do you have to say about human nature and human tendency? Of course you would find such people. And the point is not to ban them, the point is to laugh at them and to expose them. So I, I am for good dissent as well as for bad dissent. The problem with uh, bad dissent is that very quickly it can lead to scaremongering. And that is a problem. So you can actually have bad dissent uh, as long as you are not scaremongering people. And the scaremongering, the genesis of scaremongering is selectivity. And this is what we have seen since 2014. And I come back to this thing of explosion, Cambrian explosion. Everything bad has happened since 2014. Uh, and just to give you, and I would like to give a couple of examples. I still have six minutes left. I'm just, she has really scared me, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this thing about uh, India being called a lynchistan and Dalits being lynched, Muslims being lynched, and this whole thing about emergencies here growing and in creeping, intolerance, everything is growing and creeping. It's like, you know, you're on the seabed, the writhing like an octopus, and everything is growing and creeping all around you. Um, so let me give you a couple of examples, and I would love to have a show of hands here. It's a very attentive audience, which is very refreshing, coming from JNU, where half people are sleeping in the audience. Uh, everyone knows about Akhlaq, right? The person who was lynched. How many of you know about Akhlaq? Could you raise your hands, please? Yeah, so that's about 90% 90, 90 of hands went up. How many of you know who was Savant Rathod? Five hands. Who was Mukesh from Champaran? Two hands. Who was Kitaram Bhil? One hand. Who was Junaid? Five hands. Who was Farooq? One hand. These were people, Dalits and Muslims, who were lynched by Muslims. We don't know their names. They have been forgotten. After pages of history books, but we know only a clerk. Pause and wonder why that is so. In the last one year, uh, there have been more than 100 attacks, lynchings, attempted lynchings by Muslim mobs on Muslims, on Hindus, on Dalits. They just don't appear in the news. They just slip away. There have been more than 36 attacks by Muslim mobs on Dalits, lynchings, attempted lynchings. We don't hear of them. 
So this is where you can have bad dissent. You can say that, yes, lynchings are happening. But if you are selective about it, this leads to scaremongering. This leads to people believing that India has suddenly gone down the drain in the last four years, that all these things weren't happening before. All these things are happening now. That is one problem. The other, roughly, I have about four minutes left, which is about fine, um, which is about this freedom of expression. And again, I would love to have a show of hands. And uh, uh, when we think of freedom of expression and stifling of freedom of expression, banning things, we normally think of Indira Gandhi. So how many of you think that Indira Gandhi stifled freedom of expression? Show of hands, please. Of course, emergency, so everyone. How many of you think Nehru, the paragon of freedom of expression, stifled uh, freedom of expression? Yeah, so uh, this is a, uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I would say still half the hands are still in their pockets. Um, and the reason for that is this kind of propaganda that has been let loose on us through books, through paid, sold out editors, through people who are, um, for want of a better word, uh, PDs of the dynasty. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and the reason for that is that this one comment that Nehru made uh, uh, to a cartoon, his very famous cartoon is called Shankar. Now he was drawing the ire of a lot of political leaders for the cartooning that he was drawing off, cartoons he was drawing off them. Whereas Nehru said, don't spare me Shankar. Now this kind of phrase has been immortalized that it is actually Nehru who stood up for you know, uh, being lampooned by these people and who was always. So let me now, I have three minutes left. Let me, uh, let me narrate the state of freedom of expression under Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. First Amendment was brought in, reasonable restrictions, incitement, disruption of public order. Poet Majru Sultanpuri was jailed for one year for calling Nehru Hitler ka chela. First democratically elected communist go government in Kerala was dismissed. Congress president said communist parties wouldn't be allowed to participate in general elections. Stanley Wupert's book, Nine Hours to Rama, was banned. The book, Chandra Mohini, was banned. Audrey Menon's The Ramayana was banned. Campbell's The Heart of India was banned. Kostler's The Lotus and the Robot was banned. Import of any newspaper that undermined friendly relations with foreign states was banned. Aziz Baig's Captive Kashmir was banned. Frischler's Aisha was banned. Burton Russell's Unarmed Victory was banned. Robson's Nine Hours to Rama was banned. Sardanvi's Marke Somnath was banned. Robert Taylor's The Dark Urge was banned. Selling Lady Chatelier's Lover was banned. The book What Has Religion Done for Mankind was banned. Ratmanath's Bhupat Singh was banned. Import of any obscene drawing or painting was banned. Brinal Sain's film Neel Akshar Nietzsche was banned. Menon's Rama Retold was banned. Tony Hagen's book Nepal was banned. The RSS organizer was censored. Its publishers prosecuted. Film Gokul Shankar was banned, Godse's testimony was banned, Goswami's Runumi was banned, historian Dharampal was jailed for criticizing Nehru post-Indochina war, release of 1962 war film Bhul Na Jana was blocked, President Rajendra Prasad's speech was barred from distribution, Harmonium was banned from AIR, Draconian Press Objectionable Act was passed, Columnist Vivek was fired, his column critical of Nehru discontinued. HT editor Durga Das was fired, his column critical of Nehru discontinued. Congress leaders demanding Nehru's resignation were arrested and jailed. Ads to Times of India were discontinued for speaking against government policy. Magazine Crossroads was banned. Play Nigalene Taki was banned, its actors arrested. Hindi film songs were banned from being played on the AIR. Congress demanded a ban on the iconic film Parkasapthi. Film Nastik was banned. Western pop music was banned from the AIR. People's Theatre Association was banned. Play Harpida Master was banned. Film Ganga Jamuna was blocked. Sarat Chandra Chattopadhyay's play Mahesh was banned. Tagore's play Gora was banned. Balrat Sani's play Jadu Ki Kursi was banned. Tagore's play Besarjan was banned. Pradeep's film song was deleted. Two songs from Firzubha Hoge were banned. Editor Pralat Keshav Atre was jailed for writing a critical article. Film Jugnu was banned. Film Jharna was banned. Under Jawaharlal Nehru. And when I asked who was more responsible for stifling freedom of expression, Indira Gandhi or Nehru, most of the hands said Indira Gandhi. This is the reason. Selectivity is going to be our bane. It is going to be the destruction of the knowledge that we are going to spread around young people. And that is why I will always have uh, my praise 
for the younger generation and the social media. You are the real warriors. You are going to put all these people and all these politicians to shame. Thank you.